Well, this morning's message is entitled, Keeping Sabbath, and um, I'm reading from Mark chapter 2, and it's uh, the passage that, um, that was referred to from Matthew. Um, they're used in several different uh, the Gospels. So in Mark chapter 2, uh, we begin reading, One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples began breaking off heads of grain to eat. But the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them, Haven't you ever read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God during the days when Abathar was high priest and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. He also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. Jesus went into the synagogue again and noticed a man with a deformed hand. Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus' enemies watched him closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man, come and stand in front of everyone. Then he turned to his critics and asked, does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save life or to destroy it? But they wouldn't answer him. He looked around at them angrily and was deeply saddened by their hard hearts. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand, and it was healed. At once the disciples went away and met with supporters of Herod to plot how to kill Jesus. May God bless us in the reading of his word. A pastor writes of a rabbi who walked or biked to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And this was some distance away, so this rabbi had to ride his bike quite a distance or to walk. He didn't drive his car there on the Sabbath because it, for him, constituted work. But he would ride his bike. So this kind of intrigued the pastor, and he suggested to the rabbi that it actually took more work to ride a bike to the, Sabbath, to the synagogue on the Sabbath day than it would have been to get into the car and drive there. The rabbi said that when riding his bike on the Sabbath, he was not tempted to go any place else, to go shopping or to run any errands. So that was why he rode his bike. He also said that when driving his car there, it would be more um, easy to do things that he didn't intend to do that would take him away from keeping the Sabbath Holy. That was one perspective. His idea of keeping the Sabbath holy was not to ride or drive a car because it would distract him. He might get caught up in doing other things. We wonder sometimes if this, out, if this idea of the Sabbath is outdated to keep that strict an interpretation of it. But the deeper question is this. What does it mean for you and I to keep Sabbath? What is the purpose of it? What does it mean for us to keep it? I'm excited because um, soon in Appleton, not too far from my house, there is going to be a new restaurant opening called Chick-fil-A. And Chick-fil-A makes great chicken sandwiches. Now, Chick-fil-A was founded by Kathy or by Truett Cathy, and Truett Cathy had a heart for his employees. So one of the uh, foundation stones of Chick-fil-A's is that they are closed on Sundays so that his employees could have a day of rest and relaxation with their families. Now the malls pressured Truett Cathy to keep his Chick-fil-A stores open. 
I can remember um, quite a few years back, there was a Chick-fil-A in Southridge Mall in Milwaukee. And it didn't last there very long because it was closed on Sundays and the mall people wanted revenue from all businesses that were open and it wasn't open. So they pressured him to stay open, but he refused and soon Chick-fil-A was no longer in Southridge Mall. But, Chick, but um, Kathy, or Truett Cathy kept to this whole idea that the restaurant owners and his employees should have at least one day off to spend with their families and to have for themselves. So staying closed on Sunday was one way for Truett Cathy to keep Sabbath and to allow his employees to do the same if they wished. Keeping Sabbath. We know of this concept. If we've been familiar with the Ten Commandments, we know that keeping the Sabbath holy is one of the Ten Commandments. We grew up recognizing that. And for many of us, keeping Sabbath means going to church on Sunday morning. Now those of us who grew up in the 1950s, and I know some of you are, don't remember this time, so I'll, I'll elaborate a bit. But for those of us who grew up in the 1950s, there was a time when there weren't stores open on Sunday. I can remember down the block from where I lived, there was a pharmacy. And the pharmacy members, or people, owners, were members of my uh, church. And I went to a Catholic church at that time. And they were open from 9 to 12 on Sunday morning, just primarily so people could have prescriptions refilled if they needed to do that. But come noon, they were closed, along with just about every other store in town. It was natural for everything to be closed. And kids, as kids, we weren't allowed to do very much on the Sabbath. We weren't allowed to do a lot of activities. And um, one of the good things about that, it meant I didn't have to cut grass on Sunday. So I appreciated that during the summer, although in winter it snowed, I still had to shovel snow. It is quite different today. We live in a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week society. If there's a store that isn't open, we're surprised. We're wondering what's going on here. And it puzzles some of us because many of us use Sunday to shop, to do chores, to get caught up, and that constitutes a lot of what our Sabbath day is. And so that kind of begs the question, are we really keeping the Sabbath? Well, today's gospel shows us two instances of when Jesus was being criticized for not keeping the Sabbath. In the first instance, his disciples and Jesus were criticized because as they walked through a field on a Sabbath, they broke off heads of grain to eat. And the Pharisees referred to this as harvesting because it was against the Sabbath law to do for a farmer to do any harvesting of grain on the Sabbath. Jesus points the Pharisees to the story about David when he and his men were running for their lives from their enemies and how they also plucked grain to eat on a Sabbath and then they ate bread from uh, the priest's house. But David was God's anointed. So no one who read this story held David in contempt of that law. And so Jesus is kind of questioning as God's anointed why he was being criticized. And then the second story has to do with Jesus healing on the Sabbath. And the Pharisees found this as work as well. But Jesus responded by saying that love, not the law, was the highest value. And the chief objective of the law was to save and preserve life, not to make a person suffer longer. So Jesus was angry that the Pharisees saw the law as greater than love. And they failed to see that the whole idea of the Sabbath law was to meet the needs of people, not for people to meet the requirements of the law. We have kind of a, a side note here that's kind of interesting. 
that when the Pharisees heard Jesus' response, they went out and began to plot to kill him. They were doing this on the Sabbath. They didn't see a contradiction. The Pharisees were very legalistic about keeping Sabbath. So it begs the question for us, what are our attitudes about keeping the Sabbath? Is the Sabbath a, a strict day of observance of some kind, or is it a day to do with what we want? Is our Sabbath day any different for us than any other day of the week? And perhaps most importantly, what is it that God wants for us on this Sabbath day? Now, reading from Exodus chapter 20 is helpful for us because this is where we find the commandment about the Sabbath. And it goes like this. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. We note here that rest was for property owners, for farmers. But not only for them, it was also for their children, for their servants, for the foreigners amongst them, even for their animals. God here creates a rhythm for us to live healthier lives. And it was based on the rhythm that he established himself by creating the world in six days and then resting on the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is given to us for rest, for restoration, and for renewal of our body, mind, and soul. Another way to look at it is the Sabbath provides us an opportunity to recharge our batteries for the week ahead. Ruth Haley Barton wrote a book called Sacred Rhythms, Arranging Our Lives for Spiritual Transformation. She writes this, she says, the point of the Sabbath is to honor our need for a sane rhythm of work and rest. It is to honor the body's need for rest, the spirit's need for replenishment, and the soul's need to delight itself in God for God's own sake. So the Sabbath is really our opportunity to be renewed. It, it's a time to make a connection with our families. It's a time to make time for God. Sabbath helps us to look to God, acknowledge God, worship God, and love God. Now for most Christians, the Sabbath is on Sunday morning. This is our Sabbath time. But for those who work on Sundays, Sabbath might be a different day. When I was a full-time pastor, uh, I did not have Sunday as my Sabbath because that was a work day. So Saturday was usually my Sabbath day. A lot of pastors take Monday. So people who work on Sunday can use another day of the week. For it's not the day of the week that's important, it's taking the time for family and for self and for God. So how can we go about shaping our Sabbath time? How do we go about making sure that we have time that is, is for God, for self, for family, and using that wisely? But Ruth Haley Barton suggests three things to exclude from our Sabbath and three things to include. Now, you may agree with some of these things or disagree, and that's perfectly okay. But let's listen to some of the ideas that she has. So, three things to exclude. One thing to exclude is work. 
And this is defined as whatever is work for you. Now, I would find cutting the grass to be work for me, so I'm glad to exclude that on a Sunday. Some people enjoy doing that kind of thing or tinkering in their garden. That's not work. So it really it depends upon whatever is work for you. That's a thing she suggests we might exclude. She suggests, secondly, that we exclude buying and selling. Shopping, in other words. She says what this is, does is it feeds our consumerism and it also makes other people work. A third thing she says to exclude is worry. That the Sabbath day is not a day for paying bills, getting caught up on our to-do lists, or doing other things that are going to cause us stress and worry. So avoid things on Sunday that cause you stress and worry. She says there are three things that we can include on Sunday. We should include resting the body. Now, like this part, she's just taking a nap on Sunday afternoon. All in favor? Not now, Sunday afternoon. Take a nap. She says uh, it's a good time to have a leisurely bike ride or take a leisurely walk. Don't, in, don't indulge in, in uh, physical labor. Another thing to include is replenishing the spirit, whatever that might be for you. Uh, for many of us, it might be reading a book or listening to music, something that just replenishes us. And then she suggests in, that we include replenishing the soul through our worship, through a time of reflection on our lives and our life in God. Uh, maybe uh, spending time counting our blessings. Maybe playing games with family or just having some time with family. Uh, having this time to enjoy together. Now these are suggestions that she gives, and they may or may not work for you. However, how we keep the Sabbath does boil down to two questions. The first one is this, what activities will I refuse to engage in so that the Sabbath is truly a day of rest and worship? What will I refuse to engage in so that the Sabbath is truly a day of rest and worship. And the second question is, what activities will I include so that I will have a day of rest and worship? What am I going to incorporate in my lifestyle that will make Sabbath day a day of rest and worship? These are important questions for us to be able to answer. Well, a priest, a minister, and a rabbi were telling stories to one another about how they had some miracles in their life and their belief in miracles. And the priest illustrated his belief in miracles by telling about a recent ask, um, incident when he was on an airplane. It seems that as his airplane was coming in for a landing, there were suddenly all these great storms all around. The, the rain was falling hard, almost like hail. There is lightning and thunder. The winds were blowing the, the plane all around, and it was quite, getting quite dangerous, quite serious. So he prayed for a miracle. And he said, suddenly, for 100 yards all around the plane, it was calm, and the plane was able to land safely. Well, then the minister talked about his a miracle, the one that he prayed for, and he illustrated this by talking about the time he and his wife were on a boat in, in a body of water. And a storm came up there too, and there were great high waves that were pounding a boat and tossing it, and they were afraid that they were going to capsize. So he prayed that the, the storm would be stilled and that they'd get back to shore safely. And sure enough, for a hundred yards all around the boat, there was a calm, even though there were storms all over every place else. And he and everyone on their boat were able to get into the shore uh, quite safely. And so the rabbi, he decided to share his story about a miracle as well, because he believed in miracles. And he told about how a visitor came 
one Saturday, because they observe uh, Sabbath on a Saturday, so one day a, a visitor came to the synagogue on the Sabbath for Sabbath service with a suitcase full of money for the synagogue. Now this presented a problem as counting money on the Sabbath was considered work. So the rabbi said, I prayed for a miracle, and for a hundred feet all around the suitcase, it was Wednesday. But God gave us the Sabbath not as a legal code, but for our well-being. God knew that we needed a time for rest and for renewal and for connection with God, with self, and with family. So God blessed us with the Sabbath. Now there is a couple of thoughts that I appreciated that I came across, and there, it's these. If we had a bad week, Sabbath is coming. One good way to look about Sabbath. We've had a bad week, it's just a terrible week. Well, Sabbath is coming. That time of rest and renewal and restoration is coming. Second thought, if we have a tough week ahead, Sabbath has given us the strength and the energy and the rest that we need to face whatever comes our way. Keeping Sabbath, it's a really good thing for, to, to, for us to do. May God bless us as we keep holy the Sabbath day. Amen.